Well, good morning. I hope you're doing all right today. Um, I'm Pastor Eric at Mount Carmel United Methodist Church, and it's just such a privilege to be with you as we share a little bit during this Advent season. Um, our scripture reading today comes from Psalms 85, 8 through 13. Let us hear the words. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. What an amazing gift from God that we remember in this Advent season that he does the very thing. He brings us new life, new hope, new gifts of grace. But let us go to God in prayer today. Holy and gracious God, we come to you thanking you for your righteousness, for your love, <clears throat> for your peace, and for your mercy, and for all that your faithfulness has poured out for us. Father, there's those that are sick, that are weak, that are lost, that are struggling. Those that are still battling COVID, and Father, people that need your help right now in our world. Not only with that disease, but with so many more. The disease of addiction, of loss, of struggle, of hopelessness. Father, you bring a new day in this Advent season. Fill us with your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's just jump right to it. I hope that you're ready. The Advent and Christmas season bring many images to our minds. We think of gentle scenes of snow or bright stars in the sky. Some for, prefer to envision a crude crib and tiny life nestled into it. Others see and perhaps even believe in the possibility of peace on earth and goodwill to all people. Psalm 85 gives us more or gives us none of these things. However, Psalm 85 paints a picture, a vision, an artist rendering, if you will, of what the kingdom of God looks like. It is a song of promise and a reminder of what God has done for us in the past because that past we can rest confident in the future. And what does the future look like? Verse 10 offers an image. There the psalmist imagines the steadfast love and the faithfulness of God coming together with the people. They don't come to shake hands or to bow respectively to one another. They come together and kiss. We can imagine the passionate kiss of the lovers of the kiss of greeting of family and friends. With apologies to the movie Casablanca, a kiss is not just a kiss. A kiss is a tender, affectionate, vulnerable, and passionate expression of friendship, of love, and of peace. Perhaps that's a, that is why Judea's betrayal is so, Judas's betrayal is so emotional wretching for us. To be betrayed with a kiss is the ultimate indignity. But here the vision of future is for two people greeting each other with the most disarming expression of friendship. This peace is not simply the abundance or absence of violence. It is the presence of genuine affection and welcome. It's not exactly a greeting card material or something we would see in any Christmas play. But this image gives us a good idea of what God has in mind for us. Jesus Christ, you come among us with your disarming friendship and peace. We welcome you. We welcome you. Are you welcoming Christ into your life this Advent season? Have you begun to slow down and take a look on the inside? On the dark and deep and quiet moments of our life, have you stopped to think about what God sees? Not what us, the people around you, see, but what God sees in you. Is it good? Is it worthy of the kingdom love? Is it worthy for the sacrifice of this beautiful child on the cross for you, for me? 
Do we live a life that's worthy of God's love? And see, that's the thing. If you're breathing, God is worry, worthy of your love. If you're breathing, God thinks you're worthy of the sacrifice of his son. Because that's why he sent him. He came to this earth to walk among us. To experience what life was. And he did. And we followed and some followed and loved him and some cherished him and yet some betrayed. Kind of reminds you of normal life, huh? We have some of our best friends that have betrayed us in our life. Some that have called us names and we never knew why, never understood. And yet the scripture and the psalmist does paints a beautiful picture of love and of faithfulness and of peace and righteousness. And the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Wow. That's verse 12. That is an amazing statement. Because God does the very thing. But do we take time to listen in the Advent season? As we begin the new Christian year, as we begin to open our hearts to be excited about Christmas and what God has given us in the gift of a child? Or do we just open our hearts and minds to be receptive to what we're going to get? What we're going to take away? What is mine? Well, how about looking at it this way? What is yours is the forgiveness of your sin. What is yours is the love and the compassion of Christ. As the scripture says, peace, faithfulness, glory may dwell in our land. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground. Righteousness will look down from the sky. And the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. What if you claim that this year? Claim the righteousness of our Savior Jesus Christ during this Advent season. You took time to stop what you're doing to look inside your heart and realize that I need God. I need the Savior, His Son, that died on the cross, that gave the repentance of my sin as I open my heart and say, God, I'm yours. Forgive me. Take time to speak to your children. Speak to your spouse or your loved one or your mom or dad or grandparents and share that gift of God, that gift of hope of love and of peace and joy. I just can't imagine all that we go through every day and all the things that have torn us apart and we continue to allow that to happen. When we've talked about already, we know the end of the story. We know the winner. The winner is Christ. The winner is God. And we are blessed enough to be able to be a part of that kingdom by believing and trusting God. Wherever you are on this Monday morning, this time, December the 7th, the time to stop, focus, and live for God. Wherever you are, take the time right now, this day, and give God glory as you celebrate this Advent, as we await the beautiful gift of the Son, the Son that saved us from all wretchedness in our life. To give us that hope. The son of Jesus Christ. The son that came to die on that cross. That was resurrected. You know each one of us wonder where Jesus is in our life. That sometimes we wonder if he's there. Or if he's forgotten who we are. Well let me remind you. He's never forgotten you. He's never forgotten what you've done. He's never forgotten all the times that you glorified him. So as you wait on this new birth, celebrate this, that Jesus loves you. Take that for yourself. Stop worrying about taking things for you that, that are not necessarily going to appease you or satisfy you. And take the free gift, the free gift that was given freely for you. The love and the salvation of God. Pour it out for the likes of you and me. 
That's something to hold on to this Advent season. Hold on to the love of Jesus Christ. May you be blessed. May you be shared and greeted with the love and the mercy of God. I'm Pastor Eric Linebeer at Mount Carmel United Methodist Church, and I pray that you open your heart this Advent season, that you realize that there are beautiful things that are happening in this moment as we await the birth of our Savior Jesus. God bless you. Have a great week, and we'll see you soon.